Hey guys and welcome back to my channel and today we are reviewing the new Buff Bunny snack launch. This launch is almost like a Dreamhouse 2.0 taking some elements from Dreamhouse last year as well as Sugar Rush from two years ago. So just super bright fun colors. My launch that just happened a month ago was very much pastels which was still giving color but this is more like neons super super bright. This collection will be dropping on Saturday, May 18th at 1 p.m. Central Time. And as usual, you can use my code Catherine for 10% off. I know it feels like my launch was just a month ago, which it was, but my launch was a little bit delayed just so all the pieces could come in time. So I think they just kind of ended up moving a little bit closer than expected. So I know it feels like there was just a launch, but as always, there's never any pressure to buy anything. I'm just sharing these reviews to give you guys my thoughts, feedback, the information you need to decide if you would like to purchase or not, or if you just like to watch these for fun. This launch definitely appeals to me color-wise, but I definitely was a little bit bummed by the bra selection in this launch, which we will discuss but without further ado, let's get into it. So let's talk colors first. The first color we have is a hot pink. This is Candy Crush. I'm wearing Miami Vice pink from last year. This is the Rosa Scallop bra and Candy Crush is a little bit different, but it's still going to be your classic nice hot pink. We also have Guava, which I didn't think was going to be my favorite, but I think it might be getting there. It's a super bright, corally, peachy pink. Then we have Pop Rocks, which is a nice purpley pink. Party Purple has made a comeback. This is a super bright purple very flattering. I went on a hike in these leggings and I got so many compliments on the color. The last solid color we have is Airhead Aqua. So a super neon-y bright teal. I don't have the old teal from Dreamhouse to compare that to, but it is slightly different. Then we do have some neutrals in there in case brights are not your thing. We have Bone, we have Cold Brew, Black, White of course. Then we have some prints. The fashion print is back. This was the fashion print we had last year. It's a peachy pink, Miami Vice pink, party purple, all kind of mixed in there. But this time we have the pink fashion print, which is just a little bit more pink focus. It doesn't have the purple and the blue in there like last year. And then we have the blue fashion print, which is that Airhead Aqua. We have party purple and a royal blue in as well. So I think that these prints are really fun to do like a, a printed top, solid bottom, printed bottom, solid top kind of combo. It allows you to kind of mix and match some of the colors. All right, next we will be inserting all of the squat tests. I have worn all of the bottoms with nude underwear and I do think they are all good enough for me to wear to the gym, but there are definitely different levels of sheerness, especially that guava color is definitely going to be a little more on the sheer side, but I still think it's very wearable. All right, we have a variety of fabrics this launch. We have the Nubri fabric. Nubri is gonna be a little bit more dense of a brushed material, still has a lot of stretch in a naked feel, but it's still very durable. Nubri is still by far my favorite Buff Bunny collection fabric. For the bras, it has a good amount of compression where it kind of holds you in, gives a little bit more cellulite coverage on the leggings, and it still has that durability. I have never had a Nubri fabric pill on me at all. It does collect quite a bit of pet fur though. Any brushed fabric does. So I try not to wear my Nubri pieces at home. So Nubri, I really feel like works for basically all intensities of workouts. The next fabric we have is Butter. Butter is going to be, if Nubri wasn't naked feel enough for you, Butter is even more lightweight, still brushed, even stretchier, the ultimate naked feel. So it's going to be the lightest compression. It's super comfortable, super lightweight, a little bit more summer friendly than Nubri, but you definitely have to be careful with butter. I'm not the only one who has had a little bit of pilling with the butter fabric. So you're gonna wanna avoid any excess rubbing of that fabric, any Velcro if you have like lifting straps or anything. And you're definitely going to have to wash all of your butter pieces inside out and hang dry. Lately, I've been washing my activewear separately from the rest of my clothes just because I did have like a pair of Ian's jeans in there once and it just like snagged one of my pieces and I wear activewear like more than regular clothes so I can definitely fill up a load with my activewear. But anyways, butter is nice and lightweight but definitely for low impact. And the last main fabric we have is the airbrush fabric. Airbrush is going to be your sleek performance fabric 
fabric. So this is very lightweight, sweat wicking, but more of a medium to high compression. So you're going to get a little bit of hold with the airbrush. I wore the airbrush laser leggings on a hike. I thought they were great for that. They're also very pet fur friendly. I'll see a lot of brands advertising being pet fur friendly as like, like a new feature, but really if your legging is a sleek performance, it's going to be pet fur friendly. So the airbrush is going to have a little bit of higher compression, a little bit more of a structured performance feel. Definitely high impact friendly, very pill resistant. All right, we are going to start out with leggings. There are three pairs of leggings launching. We are starting out with the airbrush laser cut legging. So this is not the first laser cut legging we've seen from Buff Bunny. And I will do a comparison of the old lit laser legging with these, but this is that airbrush fabric we were talking about. So it's going to be a sleek performance compressive fit. We have a slight V waistband, no front seam. And then we have these laser cut details that actually are perforations of the fabric. So it gives a little bit more breathability. This one is listed as an ultra high rise. I find it to not be quite as high rise as the legacy leggings, but I was getting pretty mixed feedback from other athletes, whether they felt like it was truly ultra high or high. I think it leans a little bit more towards high, especially if you have a long torso like me, but I actually have been liking a slightly less overwhelmingly high rise lately. So I do like the rise of these. So compared to the last lit laser leggings, we do have a different pattern of these laser cut details. It actually goes onto the waistband in the front. It goes down the leg and it also curves underneath the glutes in the back. We do have a flattering curved glute seam in the back as well as that tonal silicone branding that Buff Bunny has been switching to, which I just love. And a little bit more detail down the leg that we'll see when it's on. We do have a bonded edge at the bottom of the legging. Sometimes these can be a little bit tight on the ankles. And then if you remember the airbrush leggings, I think that that, I think they were just called the airbrush leggings that launched earlier this year, we had a bonded waistband and this waistband is bonded again. So those airbrush leggings, as well as those Rosa scallop leggings that launched last year have a bonded waistband. And what that means is basically that with any waistband, you have two thicknesses of fabric folded over itself, but with the bonded waistband, they're essentially glued together. And that creates a little extra structure and compression. You can see that it just has this kind of almost structured look to it. This waistband is only bonded in the front to the back, basically three quarters around. You can see there's this little area in the back that's not bonded. We do have a little top band in the back, but it's just in the very back of the leggings. And this bonded area gives a lot of tummy control. It can be a little bit difficult to get on though. So you gotta really believe in yourself when you're putting these on because there will be a time where you think that they're not getting on, but they will, they, they will get on. And once they do, it just smooths everything out and has some really good tummy control. So. so the previous lit laser leggings were made of the Elysium fabric, which was Buff Bunny's old go-to performance material. It was a sleek performance. It's a little bit more on the shiny side. I'd say the airbrush is a little bit more matte now, which I do prefer. We had a double thickness waistband. There was no bonding in the waistband, which means there were no laser cut details in the waistband. I feel like quite a bit less of that laser cut detail. It went more around the top of the glute and not contouring underneath the glute. Still flattering glute seams in the back. And these had a true seam at the bottom as well instead of that little bonded edge. Okay, here they are. So first of all, again, they are a little snug to get on, but as soon as they're on, I don't think the waistband is too compressive at all. So I would stick true to size. If you're in between though, I would choose the size up. So this is listed as an ultra high rise. I think it's, I guess it is kind of ultra high. I think it's right in between ultra high and high for me. Like this is definitely not as high as Legacy, but it is higher than the Silhouette leggings. So part of the reason why we were able to have this laser cut detail into the waistband, which normally it does not go into the waistband, the old laser leggings did not have that, is because of this bonded waist. So the bonded waist, it does dip down a little bit to give a little bit of lower timing control. And it's just a super compressive area. We can see how much my finger pokes through here versus down there. It just holds things in really nicely. It also holds the leggings up really well. I went on a six mile hike in these leggings. I was, you know, hiking through snow, putting these to the ultimate test and they did not slide down. We can see the laser cut detail curves a little bit under the glutes here. It's not like a full obvious under booty contour, but just kind of adds a little bit of shape in the back. The back does have a top band back here, but again, since it's in the back, it really doesn't cut into anything. We have that logo. We have the curved seams. So they're solid medium to high on the booty scale. The airbrush fabric is definitely more on the compressive side. It's more of a medium to high compression. With that, the glutes do get a little bit compressed. They're not going to be as flattering 
as something like the Silhouette leggings in the Butter fabric. I think the airbrush fabric in general just stays up a little bit better than Elysium because Elysium is a little bit more slick. The airbrush has a little bit more of a matte feel to it, so it just has a little bit more hold. Moving on to the full length view, we do have a 26 inch inseam down here. We also have that little bonded edge at the bottom, which is compressing around my ankle a little bit. If you do carry a little bit more weight in the ankle area, it could be a little bit snug. But yeah, I'm really happy to see a performance legging from Buff Bunny. I feel like they've been really doing a good job of the performance leggings lately, so I hope that we see more. I did forget to mention, you will see a little bit of your underwear through these little laser holes, and you can't hide it under the waistband because there's holes in the waistband too. So your best bet is just sticking to nude underwear, when I do that, I really don't see it very prominently and it's not a problem. The next new legging we have are the Silhouette leggings. So these are going to be the butter fabric. So they're going to be the most lightweight leggings. So these are a high rise, so they hit the small of the waist. We have, again, a slight dip down in the front. We do have some little seams up at the front here. The front portion of the waistband does not have a top band, but the back three quarters does have a little band at the top there. With the butter fabric being so lightweight and stretchy, that little top band really doesn't cut in and this is someone who doesn't like a top band I still don't like the top band because I feel like it encourages rolling of the waistband but it doesn't give you any muffin top cutting in they did that so the leggings would stay up a little bit better um, I don't really think that they need it these do already stay up better than the curve leggings because the curve leggings that were also the butter fabric those had a shortened back rise and I just didn't feel like those stayed up very well but the candid cross waist from my collab those didn't have a top band and they stayed up really well for me. Anyways, these are a 26 inch inseam. We have a little seam down the front, tonal branding in the back, curved glute seams, and then there's a little extra glute contouring seam. It's almost like a little heart that goes around, but it doesn't go all the way around so that we avoid the little monkey butt contour effect. Just adds a little bit of extra something to the glutes there. Here are the silhouette leggings. So we can see they hit the smallest point of my waist, which is how Buff Bunny has been defining high rise. So it covers the belly button, but just a tiny bit over. It's much less high rise than the Legacy, which hits me probably a good inch or an inch and a half higher. We have that slight V dip down in the front and we have more delicate Rosa style seams than the thicker Legacy Flatlock seams throughout this legging. But the side has a little bit of that raised seam, kind of like that we saw in the Bliss Butter leggings. So it's almost more of a defining contour seam. Very lightweight here. We are not seeing that crotch gusset in the front. In terms of sizing, I would definitely say true to size. If you're in between, you could really go either way. This is a very stretchy legging, so you probably could get away with sizing down. And like I said before, we have no top band in the front part of the waistband, but it does pop up right around the side here. So we do have a top band on the sides and the back, but out of all of the top bands that Buff Bunny has done, this is definitely the least invasive one but i do feel like it kind of encouraged the leggings to roll a little bit in my workout moving on to the back we have that little extra seam that contours around and ends right about here so they didn't want it to go all the way around and have that monkey butt contour but it does give just like a little bit extra to the glutes there and we already had those flattering curved seams in the back so this one definitely gets a medium to high on the booty scale the butter fabric really does not squish the glutes down, but it is the thinnest fabric that Buff Bunny has had. So if you are looking for cellulite coverage, this is really not going to be the one, especially in lighter colors. I love the tonal silicone branding that we have on these leggings. And I will say these did stay up well during my workout, as opposed to like the curve leggings. The curve leggings, I really did not feel like they stayed up on me very well. These ones do, especially because the rise of the back seam is longer than the curve leggings. But one thing I think that these leggings could benefit from is I think that these would stay up between the glutes a lot better if we had a hidden scrunch like we did for the candid cross waist legging. And I don't think every legging needs a hidden scrunch by any means, but I think the butter fabric just does better and stays up better when it has the hidden scrunch. So I think these would have benefited from that. That's probably one change I would have made. Here's our full length view. These are 26 inch inseam. They're hitting around ankle length for me. We can see that seam goes all the way to the front of the calf here. It does not go along the bulk of the calf in the back, so there are no tight calf seams, which is good. So yeah, in terms of butter fabric leggings, I still think candid cross waist 
are number one for me, but these are definitely an improvement from the curved leggings. And the last legging is a repeat favorite. These are the Legacy leggings. So these are the OG Legacy leggings. In my collab, the last launch, we had the Micro Legacy leggings. Personally, I'm all about the Micro Legacy now. If you're interested in the differences, I will link that review down below because we did review that in depth. But these are the classic Legacy leggings. So they're only coming in this Candy Crush color. So these have an ultra high rise, which means the rise goes above the natural waist. So if you are not a super long torso, this can be a little bit overwhelming. We do have a double thickness waistband. This one goes flat across, no front seam. We do have some seams that go down the side of the leg, 26 inch inseam. And then we have that classic legacy tri-seam detail in the back. This is the signature legacy seam. We do have the we do have the old branding on these leggings. We don't have that tonal silicone branding. I think it would elevate the legacy leggings to have the tonal silicone branding, but the micro legacy leggings had that. So just figured I would point that out. These can tend to vary a little bit on compression. I do find them to be more compressive than the micro legacy leggings, about a medium compression. Still flattering on the glutes with those seams, about a medium to medium to high on the booty scale. I feel like the standard for the booty scale just keeps going up. So when these used to be maybe a medium to high, I feel like now they're more of a medium. Like they're still flattering on the glutes, but they're not really enhancing a whole lot. We don't always need an enhanced glute moment. These are made of the Nubri fabric. So we have a little bit of hold, a little bit more cellulite coverage than the butter, but it will attract pet fur. So these have always been a classic for me from Buff Bunny. But again, I am moving a little bit more towards the micro legacy now. Next, we are moving on to shorts. Since summer is around the corner, there are definitely more shorts on now. First up, we have a returning classic. We have the Legacy 6-inch shorts. So there are no 4-inch shorts launching in this collection. Based on polls that I've done, I think most of my audience prefers the 6-inch, but I still think it would be nice to have the 4-inch option. Anyways, we just have the classic Legacy shorts. So these are a high rise, a little bit less high than the Legacy leggings. Double thickness waistband straight across in the front, six inch inseam. Thigh opening is also a little bit flared, so it's very thick thigh friendly. And we do have those tri seams in the back. This is the blue fashion print. So we did have the six inch legacy shorts last time as well. These are both Nubri fabric. The fabric content has not changed. Nubri is getting a little bit stretchier over time. I think they're kind of working on the fabric. So this is the stretch of the thigh last year. I definitely feel an end point to the stretch with that seam at the bottom. And this is the thigh stretch this year. So I'm getting a lot more stretch in the thighs. I used to be a little bit more inclined to size up in the patterned bottoms because they could be a little bit more compressive. But since the fabric is getting stretchier, I'm finding these to be more true to size and not really needing to size up. All right, here are the six inch legacy shorts. As you can see, these are a high rise, which means they go just about to the belly button. These are a six inch inseam and I just inserted the side by side, but these have so much more stretch to them than the old printed legacy shorts. So it seems that they finally have gotten a stretchier way to do a printed fabric, which I definitely appreciate. It used to be before that all of the prints would be pretty stiff and definitely a lot more compressive, but in this size small, which is my normal size, they are definitely thick thigh friendly. I do not see any reason to size up. And the compression honestly is still about a light to medium. These honestly feel a little bit less compressive than the actual legacy leggings. So true to size, if you're in between, you can really go either way. Normally I'd recommend sizing up, but in this case with this new stretch, you could probably size down if you needed to as well. Flat across waistband here. We do have a seam up the side and then we have that tri-seam detail. Say medium to high on the booty scale here. The six inch legacy shorts are always a classic a go-to for me so i'm definitely excited to see these coming in so many different colors and prints these are definitely a top choice one last note about the new fashion prints is they are lined with the base color as opposed to the old fashion print which was lined with white so you get less of that white show through it's a little bit more true to the color the second short are the silhouette shorts. So these are actually a six and a half inch inseam. They're a little bit longer than the legacy shorts. Again, made of the butter fabric. The structure on the top is the same as the silhouette leggings. So we've that slight V waistband. We have more delicate Rosa style seams going on here as opposed to the legacy. We still have that double seam detail in the back with that little glute contour seam that stops around the mid glute there. Tonal silicone branding. And I did wear these the gym today and I feel like because the thigh opening is so wide and so stretchy 
they were wanting to slide up a little bit in the thighs. So there's a balance between being super thick thigh friendly and then not having quite enough compression in the thighs to actually keep the shorts where they should be. So I feel like I could have actually used a little bit more compression in the thigh area here, but we'll discuss that when these are on. Okay, here are the silhouette shorts. So we have that same high rise as the leggings. And again, no top band in the front here, but we do have the top band in the side in the back. We have a medium and high on the booty scale, those curved seams, that curved seam that goes around the glutes but stops here. These are a six and a half inch inseam. They're called the six inch silhouette shorts, but they definitely are six and a half inches on the inseam. So just a little bit longer than the legacy shorts. And they are definitely thick thigh friendly, but I will say they did want to kind of slide up a little bit at the gym just a little bit kind of like that, almost because I think they could use a little bit more compression at the bottom of the thigh to really keep them in place. I didn't get any rolling or anything really crazy like that, but I did feel like they wanted to come up just a little bit. In terms of sizing, I would say that these are true to size. If you're in between, honestly, they're very stretchy. I think you could size down. Overall compression is a light compression, maybe a little more right up at the waist here. I think I prefer the silhouette shorts to the leggings. They just, they stayed up a little bit more. They stayed in place just a little bit better. Still, we're gonna have that same issue with the cellulite on these that we do with the leggings, just not the most coverage and we have that silicone branding in the back. I also really like how lightweight these are, especially for summer. The fabric is just really thin and breathable. Again, we have that slightly more, oh, it feels like this is a little bit different. Okay, there is a slight difference between these and the Silhouette leggings. The Silhouette leggings has almost like a folded over piece of the fabric to kind of create that defining seam down the leg, but on the Silhouette shorts, it's one of those thickened Rosa seams. So this is a little bit different than the leggings. You can see that even the color of it stands out just a little bit. It's not something that bothers me at all, but it is something to note. And then the inner thigh seam on the leggings is a thicker flat lock seam. But on the shorts, it's that same fold over seam that the silhouette leggings have on the outside. So I'm kind of curious why they would choose to do this one on the inside, given that it's a little bit thicker and can kind of rub together a little bit more because it sticks out. So I'm not sure I love that choice of a seam for the inner thigh here. I didn't notice it during my workout, so clearly it didn't bother me too much, but I just figured that would be a little change that I noticed. And the last pair of shorts, these are the Sway shorts. So these are the new flowy shorts of the year from Buff Bunny. We've had the flow shorts, we had the lifesaver shorts, and now we have the sway shorts. I've always loved Buff Bunny's flowy shorts. I think they do them really differently than a lot of other brands. They don't have that underwear lining. They have a short lining instead, and they just make them very like flirty and girly. So these are made of a fabric called Sleek Flow, and it's basically this super lightweight, stretchy, but performance material. So as opposed to the previous shorts, which maybe were a little bit more of a kind of more windbreakery type material, this is not going to make that windbreaker type noise. It's a fabric that you probably more see in a top. So here's a close up of that fabric. Soft, it's sleek, and it has a lot of movement to it. So these shorts have an encased elastic waistband. So this is not always my preferred waistband just to have an elastic. I will say it doesn't feel super cheap like a lot of elastics do, but I prefer to have more of that like adjustable type waistband just because this type of waistband is really critical to get the sizing right. It's either too big that causes this like kind of bubbling gaping effect or it's very snug. So keep in mind, this is just a straight up elastic. There's no adjustability here. The inseam on the outer shorts here is one inch, which seems like it's really short, but the way that these hang, they hang down a little bit more then the inner inseam. We have this little tulip detail at the side. And then the inner shorts on the inside have a four inch inseam. I love that they have the little Buff Bunny logo embroidered onto that little side area that just kind of pops through. We do have inner pockets and the inner shorts do not have a front seam, which I believe is new. I believe the Lifesaver shorts did have a front seam on the inside, which can just cause a little bit of discomfort. So these are listed as a high rise. Okay, here are the sway shorts so they are hitting just right above the belly button so i do agree with the high rise that buff bunny gave them and this is a size small in the size small i do feel like the waist is fitting me well i think after i have like a large meal i'm probably going to be a little bit compressed by this elastic waistband this type of elastic does not have as much give to it as a typical legging waistband. Typical legging waistband is just a double thickness of 
the fabric and this is an elastic with a lot more compression. So just keep that in mind. If you do run a little bit larger on the waist for your size, I would consider a size up. And we have the flowiness of the shorts. So this fabric, it actually is just a raw cut edge at the bottom. We have that tulip side detail where you kind of peek the inner shorts underneath, which this kind of detail I am okay with. What I don't like about some shorts is when the short underneath it is longer than the short on top. I don't like that look. So I like that the outer short here hangs just below the inner short. We do have those spacious side pockets on both sides. And again, no front seam on that inner short. I love that on this side, that little Buff Bunny logo just kind of peeks through. And another thing about the sizing, you can see here that my thighs are definitely a little bit squished in this size small. I think for me, I still wouldn't size up, but just know if you do carry more weight in your thighs, you may be getting a little bit of sausage thighs. So I'd say that these are not the most thick thigh friendly shorts. Fortunately, most of the time that compressed area is going to be covered by that outer short anyway. The inner shorts are giving me a solid medium to high compression. It's a sleek performance material on the inside. It feels a little bit more similar to Elysium than Airbrush. It has like more of a shinier slick feel than the matte feel of the Airbrush. But yeah, these stay put really well. They're really nice walking short. They almost have like a skirt like look to them, which I like. I know it's, it could be hit or miss whether this is your style or not, but I just, I love all the flow and I think they're super comfortable. Next, we're moving on to sports bras. And this is where we get a little bit, a little bit disappointed in this launch. This launch is definitely more towards the IBTC, which is the itty bitty titty committee, if you guys didn't know. And I'm okay with every single bra not being super high impact. I actually often go for a low impact bra, but for me, it has to have enough coverage to keep the girls in. And a lot of the bras in this launch are not keeping my girls in. I wore two of the bras the past two days and I had to put on my little warm up shirt for my whole workout because we were gonna have a wardrobe malfunction and that's just not something that I want to experience on a daily basis. So there was supposed to be one more BTC friendly bra in this collection that didn't make it in. But even knowing that, I still am a little bit disappointed with the bra selection. And I know you guys are definitely feeling the same way, especially since the only bras that I feel like I can really wear in this collection are made of that airbrush fabric and it doesn't go with the rest of the items. So if you do have a larger bust, there are not really a lot of options to get a full matching set in either the butter or the Nubri fabrics. I feel like we need to have at least one bra with enough coverage in every fabric and every color, just so people of all different bust sizes can get the colors that they want. Because it's a little bit disappointing if you're like, oh, I really want this color legging, but there's no bra that's going to work for me that comes in that color. So it definitely does put a little bit of a damper on this launch for me because I was really excited about a lot of the colors. Anyways, let's move on to the bras. All right, the first sports bra we have is the Glow Sports Bra. So this is a twist front sports bra with a strappy back. We have silicone branding on the back left. We do have removable cups in here and the straps are an encased elastic. So they still are supportive in the straps, but we can definitely tell this is going to be a lower coverage bra. It does resemble the double twist bra as well as the twisted bra. So I will be doing a comparison of all of those. The double twist bra is made of the butter fabric. The twisted sports bra is Nubri. This one is definitely going to go best with the silhouette leggings and shorts. It's the same fabric, the same colors. It does look to have a little bit more coverage than the double twist bra. So there's still some hope that this one will work for me. I hope it does because it is really cute. Okay, here is the glow sports bra and I feel like this one runs more true to size than the double twist bra, but something about the butter fabric, sometimes they really just shrink the sizing because this feels like pretty snug small. So I would definitely say consider a size up in this one, especially if you're trying to make it work for a larger bust. But unfortunately we can see I have quite a bit of spillage. I had my fingers crossed for this one. I really wanted this one to work for me. Anyways, we do have those removable cups in there. We have that cute twist front. So this bra is actually twisted over onto itself. It's not just like a twist detail like the twist bra. Again, good side boob coverage, but the front is very scooped. So overall, we're giving this a low coverage and a low support. This is definitely not BTC friendly. I personally am not going to be wearing this to the gym. The straps are really comfortable though. They're that encased elastic. So they still have a good amount of thickness to them. That if you're a medium to small bust, I think this would work for you with that logo right here. 
the twisted straps in the back. I'm gonna try to pop the cup pads out and just see if that provides me with any extra space, even though I do prefer to have the cup pads in there. Okay, so here it is with the padding removed. I definitely am spilling out of it a little bit less, so it's a little bit better. I may attempt a workout with this. Overall, I have tried twisted sports bras like this that have fit me better, that have had a little bit more coverage. So yeah, if you're in between, I would definitely go with the size up. I'm actually gonna see, I think I have a bra very similar to this. Okay, if you watched my recent TikTok shop video, I tried this Oxjox bra. And if you know Oxjox, they're a, an affordable activewear brand that I have tried for years. And they have this bra, which is very similar to this twist style, except I actually get a lot better coverage in this one. So I'm just gonna quickly pop this on to show you guys. And I'll link this for you as well. It's very similar. Okay, here's the Oxjox bra. And as you can see, the coverage is just much better. Like I'm getting, I definitely have a cleavage moment, but it's not nearly as much. I think this bra just fits me a little bit better because it's a little bit more triangular shaped, which follows the natural shape of my chest as opposed to the Buff Bunny one, which again is a little bit more of a wide V-neck, which doesn't fit me as well. We still have that twist detail. There are cup pads in here and then the back is open and strappy. So very similar. I already know I'm gonna get questions about the colors compared to the Aqua to the Airhead Aqua, it's definitely a little bit off, but Oxtrox has had this bra around for a while and it's one of their more popular ones. So just let it share. Editing Catherine here. For this bra, because of all of that spillage, I do think sizing up is going to help. So I actually have a size up on the way and I'll update in the comments if it's better. But I think looking back, I think a size up will help the issues that I'm having more so than sizing up in something like the girlfriend bra where I wasn't being forced out of the bra. The second sports bra is the girlfriend sports bra. So this is a return from the boyfriend launch. And I thought I would give this one another try, but guys, I, I don't want to be dramatic, but I really, I really don't like this bra at all. I wore this to the gym today and you know when an outfit is just not working for you, it just like is really frustrating. And I was doing deadlifts in this sports bra and literally almost lost an entire boob. You know, like it literally almost popped out. This bra just does not work for me. And listen, I'm okay with a lower coverage bra. I really am. When I say I want BTC friendly bras, doesn't mean I need the high neck, like full, full coverage, but I just need to not have a wardrobe malfunction at the gym. And I really do not see the hype about this sports bra. So honestly, I'm not super excited about this coming back so soon because it's usually a sign that they're going to be bringing this one back a lot. And I really don't like it. Anyways, this is a new brief fabric sports bra. It has a very wide v-neck and i feel like that's something we've been seeing in buff bunny recently these super wide necklines and as someone who doesn't have the most wide set girls like i'm pretty i'm pretty much right in the center here it just it really does not work for my bust shape like this sports bra the dream heather sports bra was also really wide like this the next sports bra we're talking about super wide neck it's just not working for me and my girls another thing i'm not a fan of the sports bra is there are no cup pads and there's no space for cup pads for me i just really benefit from a little bit of shaping and support nip coverage with those pads and we don't have that in this bra part of the reason we don't have that is that is because this is a reversible sports bra, but you know what? I just don't really care if something's reversible. I really will probably only wear one of the ways. I'd rather have the cup pads. So this bra comes in basically all of the colors and also the patterns. So that was one of the disappointments for me is that this is like the predominant sports bra that's going to be the best for mixing and matching in this collection and I can't wear it. Anyways, let's move on to more of the details. We have an embroidered Buff Bunny logo. We have a strappy back and you can see this is reversible. So all of the color combos with this bra are reversible. How it works is that one of the sides will be a full solid color. So the Airhead Aqua, you don't see any other colors or anything. It's full Airhead Aqua. Then we get to the fashion print. In the fashion print, you will see the piping of the inside color. It does have the embroidered logo on the inside as well. Okay, here is the girlfriend sports bra and it really looks okay on like this, but I have now tried the girlfriend sports bra in two workouts and Every time I just come very close to having a wardrobe malfunction, which, you know, some bras you're like, okay, I'm kind of like, I need to readjust. This is not just like a readjust bra for me. This is like a barely wearable one. So that is unfortunate. You can't just size up 
and fix the problem. People would say that to me all the time. They're like, oh, you're falling into your sports bra? Why don't you size up? Oh, I don't know, maybe because then the whole thing would be too loose and I'd be falling out the bottom. Sometimes the sizing up is not the solution. You can't always size up and fix issues that the bra has just with fitting your body. So no, I don't think sizing up would change anything for me. Anyways, we have this deep scoop neckline. It also has somewhat of an inverted V at the front as well, which kind of highlights the upper abs, very flattering. We have the encased straps here. It is a very comfortable bra. And then we have the open strappy back, little embroidered logo on one of the sides here. I think it's over here. Definitely low coverage, low support. Again, no cup pads. And we do have that other print on the inside here. So this is not to say that this is a bad bra. I'd love to hear in the comments down below if anyone really enjoys this bra because it has launched before so we can get some more feedback from you guys. But I would say unless you're a smaller cup size and definitely a little bit more wide set because it's actually pretty covered in the armpit area. It's just the front is so wide. Let me know what you guys think. It's a super cute bra. Love the idea of it, but I definitely am missing those cup pads and wish that it just worked a little bit better for my body. The next sports bra is the reversible Nubri crop. This is literally just the girlfriend sports bra that was made long line, but I still have the same issue with the top. I don't know, I just don't really see what issue it was solving here. Like I feel like it would have been better if they did the girlfriend sports bra with a little bit more coverage for the girls so that the BTC wouldn't have to fall out of it instead of just adding like a little long line section. This up here is the same shape as the girlfriend sports bra. They just added an area at the bottom. I did wear this to the gym because of the long line area. I was a little bit more contained in it. Anyways, this is also reversible like the girlfriend sports bra and by reversible, it's not like back to front obviously because there would be no coverage. It's inside out. So this is the fashion print. So we have that scooping wide V neckline. We have those contrasting straps. We have a strappy back. We have the tonal silicone branding in the bottom left. And then we have a long line section here. There is a band at the bottom as well as a keyhole cutout. And again, no removable cups. This one I really just didn't feel very supported in. I felt very squished and honestly just felt like it looked pretty unflattering. So again, this is gonna be another skip for me. So I did lay the girlfriend sports bra on top of this one and they basically have the same cut along the front here. So I'm still getting a pretty low coverage, definitely low support. So I think something about this one, this one honestly is giving me even less lift than the girlfriend sports bra. We don't have as defined as a little bottom seam that the girlfriend sports bra does to kind of hold you in at the bottom. So I really spill into this long line space quite a bit. So it just kind of brings everything down. There's nothing really lifting the girls up here. And it's just kind of like a pancake squisher situation just because there's no cup pads to give any sort of shaping here. I really don't think the keyhole detail does anything for me. If anything, I just kind of fall into that space and I feel like it makes it look even worse. And I did notice throughout my workout, this little front area kind of tucks under like that because the girls are just eating up that fabric looking for more coverage. So I would definitely say this one is not BTC friendly. I'm just really not a fan of this one. We have a little band at the bottom here. Luckily this band does not cut in anywhere for me. I would say that this is true to size. If you're in between, you could really go either way. Again, lots of coverage of the side boob. This bra really focuses on outer coverage and super scooping in the middle. Anyways, this is the reversed direction. So we are getting that piping of the pink along the outside. If I flipped it the other way, it would be all pink. And then we have a little bit more strappiness than the girlfriend sports bra because you have a little bit of extra length. And then we have that tonal silicone branding along the bottom here. We have a Pinto guest appearance already so tired next we have the two sports bras that are going to be a little bit more large bust friendly we'll start out with the airbrush laser sports bra so like the name suggests this is made of the airbrush fabric so it's a sleek performance we have a short elastic at the bottom of the bra this is a short line bra we do have a scooping neckline but it does have more coverage than the past bras this is fully lined with beige so you see we do have those laser cut details and you are seeing through to the beige you're not actually seeing through to your skin that's just because a sports bra needs to have more layers and the holes wouldn't be all lining up if they did the holes through everything. We have two elastic straps, one that goes straight up, 
one that crisscrosses in the back. Then we have another little keyhole area in the back there. There are also removable cups, the silicone branding on the back left there, but this one does definitely run snug. So it is large bust friendly. I can wear it, but it pushes the girls to the sky because it is quite compressive. So I definitely would be considering a size up in this one. Okay, so here it is on. So we can see this little elastic, it sits right below the bust and it's a very short line. And this is just pushing the girls up to the sky. I will say it is very supportive, even as like the non BTC option. Like I'm getting a solid medium to high support from this. I would probably recommend sizing up I can definitely wear this bra, but I but I wore it for a long period of time the other day and you can see it cuts into my lats here and it just definitely gets really tight here over time, especially due to all the compression. So I think it just runs a little bit small. I would recommend a size up. Here's that strappiness in the back and you can see those little laser cutout details and you can just tell it looks, it's just a little bit too compressive in the back. Overall coverage is, I would say medium to high coverage. We have full side boob coverage. It's really just a little peak of cleavage at the top. And I think it would probably be even a little bit less if I sized up. We can see those laser cut details showing through to the beige on the inside. And we do have removable cup pads in this bra. So I actually really like this bra just in general. And I would say that this is also BTC friendly if you don't like the other BTC airbrush bra that we're going to try next. Next for the true BTC bra of this launch, we have the airbrush laser BTC bra. So this is one that I definitely appreciate having this bra, but considering that the other airbrush bra is way more large bust friendly than the other three bras, I kind of wonder why we chose this one to make a BTC version. Like for my collab, we did the twisted sports bra and then the twisted curve because the twisted sports bra doesn't really work for large busts, but the twisted curve does. Anyways, this is made of the airbrush fabric. We still have that beige lining, but we have a couple upgraded features. First of all, the laser cut details are a little bit different. It does kind of contour around the bust here. I have some mixed feelings about this. I'm not sure I love how like boob defining that is. It is full coverage, but it's not high neck. So I really appreciated that they did that because I feel like in the past, a lot of the BTC bras have been high neck and that's not necessarily what we want. So I like that it's just enough coverage to cover all the girls, but it's nothing too crazy. We have those bonded straps. So this is an encased elastic with the airbrush material bonded to it. So it doesn't slip around. It's really nice and supportive and these straps are adjustable. They're adjustable from the front as well. I like when bras are adjustable in the front because you don't have to like reach behind you and figure out where your straps are. It's super easy to adjust. Silicone logo in the back. We have a racer back and then we have a three hook closure. And the three hook closure is all made of that bonded material. So you can see here, three hooks. We can also see in the back that since the material is bonded in the back, we do have those laser cut details that see through to your skin instead of in the front where we have those laser cut details that are just seen through to the beige of the fabric. This also came with a bra extender. So you have a lot of extension to work with. That being said, this one does run a little bit big. So I didn't need this extender. I feel like I would recommend sizing down in this one just based on how this fit me. And the last thing, instead of having removable cups, they decided to do a molded so you can see this is all a little layer of padding here and the bust area is actually pre-molded it came with these little foam packers that kind of kept the shape of the bra so i really liked that they went the extra mile with that packaging there to make sure that this didn't collapse in transit but i will say this padding does not protect against nippage. Again, I wore this on a hike recently. I was in Banff, Canada. So it was a little bit cold and the headlights were on through this. So unfortunately this padding is not as thick as like the twisted curve sewn in padding. It's also not as thick as just the regular cup pads. So, okay, here is the airbrush BTC bra. And first things first, we do have adjustable hooks in the back as well as that additional three hook closure that you can put on it. I am on the tightest setting and I still feel like it's loose and I have quite a bit of space in it. So I think the sizing is a little bit off for this one. I do appreciate that it doesn't run like super small, but you can see there's some gaping in the armpit area. So I think an extra small would be better suited for me, especially because I'm already on the tightest hook on this one. So I could go to like the middle hook or the furthest hook 
on an extra small or even put in that little insert to get more space. So I would recommend a sizing down, not even if you're in between, I just honestly would recommend sizing down unless you really prefer not to have too much compression. But since this is meant to be a high impact bra, it is meant to compress. Next, the coverage, we definitely have full coverage. Goes up into the armpit, it does scoop along the top, but I really don't even have any cleavage. If I lean over, you can see a little bit, but there will not be any falling out of this one. I do think this is definitely a high impact bra. Um, I think I would feel a little bit more of the effects of the high impact if I had the extra small, which would fit me a little bit better. And then we can see those little laser cut details here. I just think it's a little, it's almost giving mean girls, if you know what I mean, which like where they cut out the little, you know, the little parts of the, the tank top. It's just very obviously contoured around here and just not my favorite. I honestly prefer the other airbrush bra better, even as a larger cup size. It doesn't necessarily feel like an elastic along the bottom, but we do have a bonded edge along the bottom to kind of secure everything into place. I really love the adjustable straps on this one. I think they really work really well and they're easy to adjust with them being in the front. Also having that molded cup area, I like it, but like I said, the the padding is actually not thick enough to prevent the nippage. Anyways, we have that beige lining in the front and then the back is all bonded here. So you are actually seeing through to my skin. And then we have that adjustable closure. So I love that they are trying to do more high impact focused bras like this that are really meant for high impact activities. But I think this one still needed a couple tweaks for me. Another editing comment here. I am getting a size down in this bra. I think it's going to be a little bit better fitting. So I will update you guys in the comments how that works because I should be getting it on like Friday. I also should note that some people did have issues with the straps, with the straps loosening throughout their workout, like slipping around a little bit. I didn't personally have that issue, but I just wanted to bring it up. And the last category is other and accessories. So we have a new bodysuit to add to the collection. This is the Legacy bodysuit and it is a six inch inseam, which I'm very excited to see. So this is made of the Nubri fabric. We have a scooped neckline. We have adjustable spaghetti straps. We have an open back here, but it doesn't dip down too low or you're worried about showing underwear, like something like the corset bodysuit, even though I didn't show underwear in that one. This is definitely less low back than that. And it is the legacy bodysuit. So we have the legacy tri-seam detail. We have the silicone branding and basically the shape of the legacy shorts in the back. I got a size small. I heard some people saying they were sizing down. Personally, I wouldn't. And then we get to a slightly, again, <laughs> I feel like the theme of this launch is like me being a little bit disappointed, which again, not always a bad thing because we don't need, we don't need to want everything from every launch. The bodysuit inside out. First of all, something that I like is that the whole top of the bodysuit, this whole area to the waist seam is actually double lined. So you have double thickness up here. It is single thickness in the bottom. And you can see we do have removable cups, but we don't have a built-in bra. And I get, I get, you know, they say like, okay, you know, maybe it's not meant for working out, but if you have a larger bust, it's just, it's not just about working out. My girls need that support underneath just to stay in place. You know, like even walking around day to day, I don't like that feeling of not being supported. So for me, having an elastic underneath the bust there is just essential. Even if it's not a full separate shelf liner, if it's just an elastic something, I really do need that. So I was really bummed to see that we don't have this. I did get a request to compare this to the six inch Ivy bodysuit. I believe this still has pretty good stock on the website. And this bodysuit is also now a six inch inseam. This is, I believe, Journey Dark Brown. We have no seams on the front here. This one is a high neck, also adjustable straps. We have that ivy cage back detail, but this one does have a full separate built-in bra. So I will do a side-by-side -side comparison of both of these bodysuits. But if you're looking for the support of a built-in bra, I would go for the Ivy bodysuit because it has that. So we'll compare those. I got the Legacy bodysuit in the color Bone just because I hadn't got anything in any neutral colors. But this one also comes in the Pop Rocks color, which I'm really glad to see them come out with a bodysuit type item that, that's usually mostly in neutrals in a bright, fun color. Okay, here is the Legacy bodysuit. So I would consider this one true to size. Um, I definitely am feeling the compression 
of the double thickness at the top here. And it is nice to have those cup pads up there, but I'm just not feeling the same lift that I would if I had that internal bra. I do really like the waist defining seam here. I think it just kind of splits the torso well. We have that six inch inseam and definitely thick by friendly down here as well. And then we have the spaghetti straps. And in order for these to stay up where they need to for me, I had to tighten them quite a bit and I'm definitely getting some strain in the strap area. So I honestly would not say that this is the most long torso friendly. I definitely feel more strain in this one compared to the Ivy bodysuit. So I'd say this is better for short to mid length torsos. It's nice to have those adjustable straps though. We do have that scooping in the back here that's very flattering. The legacy tri-seam detail. Overall about a medium compression. I do think it's really flattering in this back area. It does go up my glutes a little bit here, but it does not go up the glutes quite as much as the corset bodysuit and the Dream Heather bodysuit, because those were both meant to have a shorter back rise seam to go up the glutes. This is not, so it does not have to go up the cheeks if you don't want it to. Yeah, I feel like you can just see from the side here, I'm just squished down a little bit and just kind of like being pulled down a little bit more up top than I would want to. So yeah, I'd say it's a really nice bodysuit, but not quite comfortable enough for me as a long torso. Okay, just quickly popping on the Ivy bodysuit because I'm actually not sure if I've reviewed the six inch version on this channel before. So here it is, true to size, love the six inch inseam, thick thigh friendly. We don't have any sort of seams in the front here. So it's just one piece of fabric in the front. There's no waist defining seam. That being said, I still don't get any gaping in the back. So it still is like nice and snug along the waist. We do have more of a high neck scooped shoulder situation here, but I honestly find this one to be a very long torso friendly. I'm really not feeling any strain in the torso. We do have those adjustable straps in the front here as well with the gold hardware. We have that separate shelf bra that just really helps with the support. And then that little caged strappy back and almost looks like a little bit more defined of shorts in the back here. So I'd say that the Ivy bodysuit is a little bit more long torso friendly and large bust friendly. So even though I think that the Legacy bodysuit has some really cute features, I think this would be my choice for larger busts and long torsos. All right, and lastly, accessories. We do have the Nubri scrunchies. These now have the embroidered Buff Bunny logo on them. I don't know if it was always embroidered. Those are coming in basically all of the colors. Then we also have white dad hats. I'm not a big hat person. They kind of itch my forehead, so I did not get that. Okay guys, that is it for the review. As mentioned before, everything will be launching on May 18th at 1 p.m. Central Time. And you could use code Catherine for 10% off your order. Let me know in the comments down below what you think of this launch overall. I think I just was left wanting a little bit more. Overall, my top picks are definitely going to be any of the shorts, the legacy shorts, silhouette shorts, sway shorts. I think those are all really great pieces. If you're looking for a performance legging, I do really like the airbrush legging. But honestly, the only bra that I really feel like worked for me was the regular airbrush laser bra, not the BTC one, maybe in a size down that would have fit me better, but the other three bras just really didn't work for me at all. So it is a little bit of a bummer to like some of the shorts of this collection and not really have a lot of bras that pair with it for my body type. Anyways, make sure you give this video a thumbs up if it was helpful and I will see you guys next time. Bye.